Weathering, Soils, and Mass Wasting, Chapter 4. Earth's external processes. That's what happens on the surface of the Earth. There's weathering, which is a disintegration and decomposition of material at or near the surface. Mass wasting, the transfer of rock material downslope under the influence of gravity. And erosion, the incorporation and transportation of material by mobile agent, usually water, wind, or ice. Weathering. There are two kinds of weathering. Mechanical weathering, which is the breaking of rocks into smaller pieces. Processes of mechanical weathering include frost wedging, unloading, and biological activity. So in frost wedging, you have water and cracks in the rocks that freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw. And when, when water turns solidifies into ice, it expands, it takes up more room, more volume, and that exerts quite a lot of pressure on the rocks and tries to break them apart. Unloading or an exfoliation, well as um, we see we have a deep igneous rock, deep pluton underground, under confining pressure, and when the surface, well the soil the rock and soil above it gets eroded away, then there's less pressure. So it's going to start wanting to expand. As it expands, it's going to start cracking, making joints. Okay? So that's going to cause exfoliation, where granite that's weathered will start peeling apart, almost like an, like an onion. Two kinds of chemical weather, of weathering. One is chemical. It alters the internal structures of minerals by removing or adding elements. The most important agent is water. Oxygen dissolved in water oxidizes materials. Carbon dioxide, CO2, dissolves in water and forms carbonic acid and alters material. Weathering of granite. Okay. Weathering of potassium feldspar produces clay minerals. Soluble salt, potassium bicarbonate, and silica in solution. Quartz remains substantially unaltered. The weathering of silicate minerals produces insoluble iron oxides and clay minerals. Rates of weathering. Advanced mechanical weathering aids chemical weathering by increasing surface area. So important factors, rock characteristics mineral composition and solubility, and physical features such as joints that gives more surface area. So let's say we had a cube of rock that's four units square, a big cube. It only has 24 square surface units, so six times four, okay, we go 24. But let's say we broke that cube up into eight, into eight cubes, and each cube is one unit square. So one unit square for each cube times six. So and there's six of them, so times eight to get forty-eight square units. So by just breaking these up into one unit cubes, you have you have twice the surface area uh, for weathering to act on. And then if you break them up into let's say a quarter of a square unit, now you're gonna have sixty-four cubes times six sides, ninety-six square units. So the more advanced that mechanical weathering is the faster the chemical weathering can act. Other important factors is climate, temperature, and moisture are the most critical, crucial factors. Chemical weathering is most effective in areas of warm temperatures and abundant moisture, hmm, kind of like South Florida. Differential weathering caused by variations in composition. So harder, um, more resistant to weathering rock layers will erode slower than others which creates very unusual and spectacular rock formations and landforms. Okay, so here's some interesting uh, rock formations. Where it's joint controlled weathering in igneous rocks. So, so where we had cracks and joints in the igneous rock, moisture got in there and froze and thawed as temperatures changed and, and uh, kind of cracked the rock up a bit and then additional weathering, water and wind occurred and these interesting shapes take place. Okay, now soil. Soil is, in, is an interface in the Earth system. It's a combination of mineral matter from rocks, water, and air. It's that portion of the regolith, which is rock and mineral fat fragments, that support the growth of plants. Typical components of soil that yield good plant growth are mineral matter, we need about 45%, 5% organic matter, and then the other half needs to be about half water and half air. Okay. Soil texture and structure. 
texture refers to the proportions of different particular si particulate sizes, sizes. Sand is large size, remember the two millimeter diameter grains or sands. Silts are smaller and clay is even smaller than that. Loam is a mixture of all three sizes. It's best suited for plant life. Okay, so to calcify soil texture, we look at the percentage of clay versus the percentage of silt versus the percentage of sand. Okay, so 100% sandy soil, the soil in my backyard is the sand. Okay, the soil that's all clay is going to be clay, and um, all silt is going to be silt. But here, loam is a really nice mix in between 10 and 30. Uh, percent clay in between maybe uh, 30 and 50 percent silt okay and uh, so anyways that makes a nice nice mix and clay loamy it's also a very nice mixed soil structure soil particles clump together to give a soil its structure the four basic soil structures platy prismatic blocky and spheroidal and it controls the soil formation. The parent material, residual soil, uh, parent material is, is the bedrock. Uh, transported soil, parent material has been carried from elsewhere and deposited. Okay, so uh, time is very important, it's most important of all in geologic processes. We have time to evolve varieties for different soils. Okay. Climate makes a big difference. Also, plants and animals. Organis organisms influence the soil's physical and chemical properties. They furnish organic matter to the soil. Now, slope. Also, that's the angle of the ground that soil is trying to form. The steep slopes of a poorly developed soils, because the soils is one of mass waste rolled down the slope due to gravity, or will be washed down, down the slope by water. So, optimum is a flat to undulating upland surface. Uh, orientation is the direction the slope is facing influences soil temperature and moisture if it's oriented to in direction where it receives more sun heat from the sun then uh, that, that will help okay. soil profile soils form in layers they, um, soil forming processes operate from surface downward and it, those layers or zones we call horizons horizons in the temperate regions will have an O Horizon, horizon for organic matter, and A horizon for organic and mineral matter, and E, which has very little organic matter. Horizons in temperate regions will have B, the zone of accumulation, and C, partially altered parent material. O and A together are called topsoil. O, A, E, and B are solemn or true soil. Okay, so here's all that in a nice diagram. Very top. We may have this loose plant and animal debris. So picture you're walking through a, a pine forest with a lot of pine needles. Or, okay, so this is your organic layer, your O horizon. Then your A horizon composed of decayed organic matter mixed with mineral matter. And then your E is a light colored zone containing very low organic matter. Clay and minerals are depleted. They've been washed out. And soluble substances have been you know, washed out by leaching. The B horizon, layer of maximum accumulation of clay minerals, it can be reddish in color due to accumulation of iron oxides in dry in climates. Dry climates may have calcite or white deposits in it. The C horizon is partially altered parent material. And then below that is the unweathered parent material or bedrock. Here's another picture showing the soil profile of different horizons here. Classifying soils. To classify soils, uh, in the United States we have a soil taxonomy. It emphasizes physical and chemical properties of the soil profile. Names of soil units are combinations of syllables of Latin and Greek origin. Okay, so there's some little bit of global soil regions. Um, you know, some of these names are like um, andesols or volcanic um, soils, eritosoils or desert soils, entosoils or new soils. Uh, just, just to name a, a few. Soil erosion. Recyc that causes the recycling of earth materials. Natural rates of erosion depend on soil characteristics, climate, slope of the ground, and type of vegetation. Soil erosion and sediment can cause reservoirs to fill with sediment. 
uh, contamination by pesticides and fertilizers. Weathering creates ore deposits. Processes called sedimentary, I'm sorry, processes called secondary enrichment can cause ore deposits. This concentrates metals into economic deposits. It takes place in one of two ways. Either removing undesired material from the decomposing rock, leaving just the desired elements behind, or the desired elements are carried to lower zones and deposited. For example, bauxite, this principal ore of aluminum, uh, and also many copper and silver deposits form this way. Mass wasting, the downslope movement of rock, regolith, and soil under the direct influence of gravity. Gravity is the controlling force. Important triggering factors are the saturation of material with water. So the more water the soil's saturated with, more likely it's going to want to slide down slope. This destroys particular par particle cohesion, and uh, the water adds weight. Point trigger factors, over steepening of slopes. Unconsolidated granular particles assume a stable slope called the angle of repose. Okay. So a stable slope, that, so the angle of repose is the steepest angle that's, that uh, materials, that particular set of materials, can sit on without sliding down. You go above, you steepen that angle anymore, then those soil particles will start um, sliding down slope. The stable slope angle is different for various materials. Oversteepening slopes are also uh, unstable. Removal of anchoring vegetation. Okay, deforestation, removal of trees off of slopes allows soil to be washed away through, uh, um, through erosion and mass, mass wasting. Ground vibrations from earthquakes shake up the soils and can make them want, especially if there's moisture in them and so, or clay, um, then they may almost uh, liquefy and start flowing down slope. Uh, types of mass wasting processes, generally each type is defined by the material involved, whether it's debris, mud, earth, or rock. The movement of the material, Okay, whether it's free fall of pieces, or slide, materials moving along a well-defined surface, or flow, materials moving as a vis viscous flow, kind of like ketchup pouring out of a bottle. Types of mass wasting processes, each type defined by the rate of the movement, whether it's fast or slow. And the forms are, for example, slump. Slump is rapid movement along a curved surface that occurs along over steep and slopes. Okay, so here, here we have um, we have a slump, this material here just kind of slumped down that slope. It has a curved surface of rupture. There's a scar escarpment, steep face. These little parts that broke these are, are um, slump blocks. And so the earth flow. Rock slide, this will happen very rapid. Blocks of bedrock move down a slope. A debris flow is a mud flow, rapid flow of debris with water often confined to channels, like river channels. Debris flows composed mostly of volcanic materials called lahars, a mixture of ash and, and mud and debris. Okay, so again, here's that slump picture up here. Here's a rock slide. There's an abrupt break, and, and the rock, bedrock, slides straight down the slope. Earth flow, a slight, very viscous flow of materials. Uh, then a debris flow is usually down a channel. Uh, so an earth flow is very rapid, typically occurs in hillsides and humid regions. Water saturates the soil, and then liquefaction takes place. Okay, so liquefaction is a special type of earth flow associated with earth earthquakes. So when you have a lot of water in the soil, and you shake it up, then it liquefies and wants to flow. Okay, so here's a picture of, of an earth flow. Okay, so we have, here's the scarp where, this, where that flow portion, the soil broke. Okay, and and then the material just kind of flew, kind of kind of just flowed down slope. Another form is called creep. That creep is, we think, very slow movement of soil and regular downhill, causes fences and utility poles to tilt. So fluxion is slow movement in areas underlain by permafrost. Okay, so this is something that might happen up in Alaska, where soil is uh, frozen year round, and it starts. Um, um, to melt a bit and become some slats saturated, this slowly flows over a frozen surface below. Okay. So here, example, creep. And creep, um, this is creep caused by freezing and thawing. Okay, so this, uh, 
So, so this particle um, kind of travels with the freezes and the thaws. Okay. So here's when the one surface is frozen, the surface of the soil is up here. When it thaws, it's down here. Well, it's because the moisture freezes, turns into ice, so water turns to ice and takes up more volume. So the surface of the land is rising and falling. Okay. As it rises and falling, particles are kind of traveling down slope with that, and that's called creep. It's very slow. So I'll fluxion lobes in Alaska. So here where there's permafrost. The surface starts to thaw, um, full of moisture, and starts to try it starts flowing over the frozen layer underneath. 